Welcome back to the Electronics Inside, the show where we tear down toys, tools and appliances just to find out what's inside. I'm David and in this video we're going back with another meter, the AVO Model 9. Okay, so previously we tore down a digital multimeter from 1977, I think it was. So it's actually, I thought it was 1980s, but it was a digital multimeter. It had that nice liquid crystal display with the ever so slightly uh, italic characters on it. And it was really cool. But of course that kind of piqued my interest when I discovered the Model 8 AVO meter that had been in constant production from the 1920s, give or take, up until 2008. And I didn't quite manage to get a hold of an, a Model 8, but I have got a Model 9, which is largely the same thing. And the obvious one with this, it's analog. Before we dive really into this teardown, I just wanted to say thank you to Michael Kellett over on the Element 14 community. During the uh, digital multimeter teardown, I found this and said this. Now the last thing I really am intrigued about is this little daughter board on the power board. It's got these little Honestly, if I didn't know the age of this device and was looking at it, I would say this was a little antenna board. It looks very, very similar to some of the antenna traces we've seen on Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built into things. And obviously, I should have known better, they were the current shunts. And thank you so much for letting me know and clearing that up. And sorry I missed the obvious there, everyone. Anyway, back to the Model 9. So this particular model is a Model 9 Mark II, which I think comes from 1965. So this is another 15 years earlier than the previous one we looked at. And hopefully it's going to be just as interesting and it is certainly as beautiful. So again, with that lovely actual glass display rather than plastic, You've got your AC wave and resistance. You've got your DC voltages and currents. Uh, you've got four terminals because you can measure up to three kilovolts. Uh, this did actually come with a pair of probes, uh, but I'm trying to handle these as little as possible because the rubber, I assume this is butyl rubber, is starting to decompose and it's just turning into a horrible sticky mess every time I touch it. And of course, no multimeter is complete without genuine leather strap. Of course, from 1965 to now, it's uh, showing its age a little bit, but you know, it still works. So from what I understand, this will measure current and voltage without batteries. However, to measure resistance, you of course need to be outputting a voltage that you can then do calculations against. So this does have a battery compartment. And what are they asking for here? So we've got a couple of spare fuses. No, a spare fuse and a one amp fuse. A one and a half volt type U2, which that's just a D battery. Philips D battery, no less. I'm not sure I even knew that Philips made batteries, but there you go. I can't find a date on that, so I don't know how old that is. And a 15 volt battery, one of these little specialist square jobs. Um, but I don't have that and I imagine that's probably what went that took this unit out of service. It's probably too much hassle to replace when you get a standard off the shelf cheapo multimeter that would take a 9 volt battery. Highly worried I'm going to take this apart in the wrong order and never get it back together again. Break something even worse. Okay, that's a good sign. Wow! <laughs> there is a definite smell coming off of this. I don't quite know how to describe it. It's like Bakelite and shellac or rosin. I... It's certainly a smell of uh, a particular age, I think. Oh, and a nut just fell out as well. That's, that's always a good sign. And a couple of very large resistors down here. Uh, I've got a 20, 20 mega ohm, 20 mega ohm in series, so 40 mega ohm and a one mega ohm and a one mega ohm in series. So they're 40 and two mega ohm. Plus I've got an additional resistor here, which is just kind of haphazardly soldered in. Almost gives hints more like a calibration type resistor. Well, that's slightly different construction. Absolutely beautiful. 
<laughs> there you go. I have a handwritten date. 12th of the 12th, 1964. So yeah, that's, this is, this is old. I didn't notice that before. So this big slotted sort of screw terminal in the center is for trimming the zero position. So I believe if I change that, there you go. I've got some adjustment on how to calibrate this to zero before I start. So these six terminals from the battery compartment uh, actually line up with these six pins here and they are large pointy sticks just to transfer power effectively. It's funny, I wouldn't have thought you'd want that fine point of contact, but I guess it's a very small current you're drawing from the batteries at any one time. What is also interesting is these two pins up here, which are used for measurement. That really surprises me, and they press on these two from the battery box. Now they're actually the connectors which go through these big resistors. So all you're doing actually is taking from here running through big banks of resistors onto these two longer prongs for certain measurements. Then you've got the 15 volts and 1.5 volts going to the shorter stakes. Trouble is, it's looking very much like you'd need to desolder this to get it apart nicely. Kind of hoping not to have to, if I'm honest. So down here at the bottom, I think this is a fuse, resettable fuse. So there is this gorgeous little uh, what I think is a recessable fuse. You can see there are four contacts up here, one, two, three, four, and they get bridged by these two copper plates which uh, have the arc pads on them. If I press this from outside, you can see they raise up, make contact, and lock. And once that's locked, you can't actually release that from outside. The only way to release it is internally, in this little mechanism down the bottom, and when that's triggered, Yeah, okay, I feel like that was a good move. From here, you can kind of get a feeling for how this might work, because that to me looks like a rather large bar magnet. If I get any sort of screw from, yeah, that's a permanent magnet, it's just holding. So this loop here was tied around that calibration screw, which is just sort of an offset cam kind of thing. So you can see as I move that, it provides some zero calibration to that analog dial. All this, this part up the top is purely just the gauge, it doesn't do anything mechanical. All the drive is from down here. But how do they get the power on there? So you can see from that little precision round resistor, through a couple of soldered on lugs, they go to the center down here between those permanent magnets. And I think there's just this tiny little pinpoint in the center where this terminal actually, no, no good. We're gonna have to take it apart, aren't we? Trying so hard not to take this apart just in case I break something, but it makes it a bit of a poor tear down if you just can't see what I'm trying to talk about. There's some very heavy metal parts to be doing this kind of one-handed precision type stuff with. I'll level with you. It's making me nervous. It's even got a little, um, little bring our arms to stop it going too high and too low and damaging itself. No! I really didn't want to do that. Well, that will never be the same. I am so very sad and so very sorry I've ruined this. Trust me when I say it hurts nobody more than me. And I don't think I'm going to be able to wind that back. Okay, so the way this actually functions, if you remember that this cylinder is actually positioned between two permanent magnets. Now you've got the current that comes in this wire through this assembly and down a tiny little pin which just holds this rotating drum at just a pinpoint right in the center of this spring. But that spring not only gives it the resistance to motion, but is also the conduction path that pulls the electricity from the outside to the inside. So with the analog measurements, you've got to bear in mind that there's all kinds of friction, there's the resistance to motion, there is uh, work hardening of the metal. You can see how many things have got to go right to give you a decent measurement. You can really understand why as soon as digital became viable, it was really preferred. 
As ridiculous as this is gonna sound, actually pretty much everything else in here, aside from the transformer, which is gonna take the high power AC down to low power, is pretty much does one thing and one thing alone. It takes whatever input you're measuring, which is controlled by the big rotating switches at the bottom, and basically turns it into the current level for this needle to display all of those inputs. And yeah, it does so in a magnificently analog way. If I take too much of this apart, then everything's gonna fall apart and there's no chance of me putting it back together again, which I really want to do. But you can see those stacks of insulated conductors with soldered tabs out the side, just being pressed together in certain positions, depending on which mode is selected. It's just beautiful. All these hand soldered connections, all these wires, just joining up certain transformers and switches in series just to apply that correct current to the analog meter. Now what I really hope is that in circumstances like this where me taking it apart further is just going to result in a big pile of passive components with nothing to show, is that you guys will forgive me for wanting to preserve it as a museum piece if you like and I'm ever so happy to take it apart to this degree and take photos and probe it and poke it and answer any questions you can ask over the Element 14 community, I will do that all day long. But I would much rather do that than take a soldering iron to this, desolder it all, and it'd be lost forever. I know there are other examples of these meters out there, but I, I feel like one less of these in the world is a bad thing. So please forgive me, and I hope you agree with that. If you'd like to know more, if you have a specific question or an angle or a photo or something you'd like me to probe, please let me know over at the Element 14 community. I'll be happy to answer anything for you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.